kick things off with the ongoing saga of Donald Judeo-Christian Trump, <laughs> who earlier this week was rudely interrupted by the FBI when he was trying to hoard classified documents. And there's still a lot we don't know about this raid. What did the FBI find? Why would Trump be keeping these documents in the first place? Has Trump secretly been able to read this entire time? <laughs> but now, we may be getting a little more insight into why the FBI moved in on Mar-a-Lago. Tonight, brand new reporting about what led the FBI to execute a search warrant Monday at Trump's Florida home. The Wall Street Journal reporting that the feds may have gotten a tip-off from an insider after officials visited Mar-a-Lago back in June to ask about government documents possibly stored there. Someone familiar with the stored papers told investigators there may still be more classified documents at the private club. Trump world is now reportedly trying to figure out who flipped. According to Rolling Stone, Trump is worried that he may have a rat or multiple rats in his mist. He's wondering if his phones are tapped or even if his buddies could be wearing a wire. Oh, no. <laughs> One of Trump's friends could be wearing a wire? This is the worst possible scenario because now he's got to tell Rudy Giuliani and Steve Bannon to take their shirts off? <laughs> Just be like, take it, you know what, on second thought, I'll just kill myself. <laughs> and if this is actually true, I am gonna be shocked. I cannot believe someone would betray Trump's trust like this without getting a book deal first. You're leaving money on the table, people. <laughs> what are you doing? Also, by the way, before MAGA world tears itself apart trying to figure out who's the rat, I think you should all consider the fact that Trump could be the leak, okay? <laughs> no, because if there's one thing we've learned over the past seven years, is that he's the king of snitching on himself. <laughs> Yeah, for all we know, he was bragging about it at the Mar-a-Lago buffet. He's just like, this chocolate cake is almost as unforgettable as the classified documents I keep in my basement. <laughs> but not a single person knows it was the perfect crime. <laughs> By the way, that's a real picture of him at the buffet. We didn't create that. <laughs> there are many pictures of him at the buffet. Now, if we had more time, we could get into how Trump has had such a tight hold on the Republican Party that they're willing to put him above the law. Or we could talk about whether Merrick Garland unsealing the search warrant will convince Republicans that this search was justified. But we just don't have the time. Because while Trump is fighting off the FBI, two former Trump officials are trying to dodge Iranian assassins. Turning to a story overseas, a member of Iran's elite Revolutionary Guard is charged in an alleged plot to murder former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Investigators say the alleged murder-for-hire plot began to take shape after this drone strike in Iraq assassinated top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani over two years ago. Iran vowed retaliation. The Justice Department is now charging Sharam Pursafi, a member of Iran's Revolutionary Guard, with offering $300,000 to murder Bolton. The FBI also alleges that Pursafi had a second job for $1 million. The target of that job, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Yeah, that's right. America assassinated Iran's top general, one of the country's most respected and feared men. And Iran responded by trying to kill John Bolton and Mike Pompeo? <laughs> it's, it's not the same level, it's like... It's like if your wife slept with your best friend and you're like, oh yeah, well I hooked up with the IT guy at your office. <laughs> okay. You know, in some ways it actually says something about how divided America is. Yeah. That it has nobody as respected as Soleimani was in Iran. It feels like if anyone got assassinated in America, half the country would be like, hell yeah, thank you, Iran. <laughs> and by the way, just as insult, $300,000 for Bolton, but a million for Pompeo. <laughs> you know, that's a big difference in price. I almost, I almost feel bad for John Bolton. Because I don't know what's worse, being on an assassin's hit list or having the assassin find you and the assassin jumping out like, John Bolton, Petar Sag, I'm looking for a more important person to kill. Uh, <laughs> do you know where I could find him? Yes, yes, point me in the right direction. Also, by the way, if Iran was willing to pay a million dollars to kill Trump's Secretary of State, they should have just asked Trump to do it. I mean, he was gonna get his vice president killed for free. Come on, people, <laughs> think about it, think about it. No, but for real, I do feel bad for John Bolton. I mean, yes, he's always trying to bomb every other country. Yes, he brags about overthrowing governments, but being hunted by the Iranians can't be fun. I mean, it definitely explains why he's wearing that stupid fake mustache the whole time. <laughs> 
It's real. Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, now, now, if we had more time, we could talk about how America sees nothing wrong with assassinating foreign officials whenever they like, but acts surprised when other countries want to get revenge. <gasps> you should have turned the other cheek! But we just don't have the time. God damn it! Because while Iran is trying to get rid of people, Japan is trying to figure out how to add people to its population. The only problem is who they put in charge of that. Japan has replaced the female minister in charge of reversing the country's falling birth rate with a man who has never had children. Masanabu Ogura said he gained an understanding of the issues facing expectant mothers by wearing a simulated pregnancy belly for 24 hours, telling reporters that wearing the 16-pound prosthetic left him with sympathy for women and back pain. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. If having a big belly helped men understand women, the patriarchy would be long gone. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is the dumbest thing ever. All it left me with is back pain. Also, like, what a bitch ass. One day, and he was like, oh, my back. <laughs> now, aside from trying to misdoubt fire their falling population problem, Japan is trying everything to figure out why their people aren't having more babies. And look, I'm not a scientist, but if you ask me, Maybe it's because they invented the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, that thing has prevented more pregnancies than every condom, diaphragm, and IUD ever made, <laughs> ever. That's real birth control. Yeah, just people be like, all right, baby, you, just, you ready to have some sex? Oh, we're gonna have some real sex tonight. Girls, call me. All right, let me just finish this mission. Let me just, oh, shit, I just unlocked the RPG. Yo, boys, get online. We're going all night. Baby, you're probably gonna want to live the rest of your life without me. Yeah! <laughs> now, if we had more time, we could talk about how Japan is a warning to every developed country in the world that if your immigration policies are too restrictive, at some point, your population is gonna collapse. Or, if we had time, we could have so much fun talking about how Japan basically has a secretary of raw dogging, which is wild. <laughs> like, what does he do? Send the army to, like, snipe holes out of condoms? I would love to figure it out, but ain't nobody got time for that because we have to go to a break. But before we do, we have to check in on the weather with our very own Desi Lydic, everybody. <laughs> So, uh, Desi, uh, you gonna tell us uh, about the weather? Yes, Trevor, let's talk about whether a man should be wearing a fake pregnancy belly. <laughs> I mean, let me just say, as someone who has been pregnant, I can tell you the belly is only 10% of the full experience. It'd be more realistic if he wore the fake belly and then got punched in the dick for 36 hours straight. <laughs> And then that dick got ripped off. And then he had to raise that dick for 18 years. <laughs> ah, the miracle of life. But at least he's trying, though. And that goes, that goes both ways. I've always said that, which is why I've been trying to understand the male experience better by acting like a man. Like, uh, I've been getting paid more for no reason. <laughs> I have, like, three friends named Kyle. <laughs> I'm talking a lot about Bitcoin, even though I don't know anything about Bitcoin. Wow, Desi, it sounds like you really... I've been interrupting people more. <laughs> Didn't really get at that. Well, great. Well, well maybe... It's easy once you get the hang of it. <laughs> So if All you have to do is wait until someone starts talking, and then you start talking. Desi, I know what interrupting is. It's when you speak on top of somebody else. Oh, uh, actually, Trevor, it's when you interject before someone's completed their thought. Desi, stop mansplaining to me! <laughs> Just get to the weather! Okay, all right. Calm down. Don't act crazy. <laughs> you should smile more. <laughs> Give it a try. Give it a try. Let's see those dimples. You know what? I'm, I'm just gonna need a moment. 